In this video, I'm going to talk about how to study for the PERT. And this is a Florida test that colleges use for class placement. And other states have similar tests. They just have different names, but they're still the basic, uh, the same concepts, math and reading. This test for us, it stands for post-secondary educational readiness test. And uh, the higher you score, the more classes you can kind of skip in your college career. You can skip those basic or remedial classes and just get right into your college career. So that's that's kind of why this is important. In this video, I'm just going to look at a few examples of uh, some questions you might see. So on the print exam, they usually ask uh, a lot of questions about factoring, uh, order of operations, PEMDAS, exponents, solve the equations. These are kind of the four main things they like to stick to, although there are there are other topics they get into as well. So that's why my first example here, uh, this is an example of factoring, but it looks a little different than what we usually factor. So this says identify the factors of each expression. And this first one, I just have m squared minus n squared. So this is called a difference of squares. I'm subtracting two perfect squares. And really, I just have to square root both terms. So the square root of m squared is m the square root of n squared is n. And then the second factor is the same exact thing, just with a plus sign. So these are pretty straightforward. It's just a one step uh, to get to the answer. And you can check you can check your answer as well. If I foiled this out, if I multiplied this um, or distributed, I would get that same original answer back. So you can kind of check uh, your work on that. So here's another factoring question that I have written here. And it's a little different than the normal factoring problems you see. It's not a trinomial. Um, so I can't really solve it using those steps. But I can, I can always factor out the GCF, or the greatest common factor. And all that means is I'm just looking at both, both terms. I'm trying to see what numbers or what variables I can divide out of both terms. So for example, I could divide out a three uh, from this, I could divide a three out of six. So I know that three would be part of that. Both of these also have X terms, so I could divide out an X. And they both have Y terms, so I could also divide out a Y, but just, just one X and one Y. That's all they have in common. So three divided by three, that's just gonna cancel. X squared divided by X is x to the invisible one power. And y divided by y, that's going to cancel also. For the second term, 6 divided by 3 is 2. x divided by x, again, those would cancel. Uh, but the y squared divided by y, that would just leave me with y to that invisible one power. And really, that's all I could factor out, would just be the 3, the x, and the y. OK, here's another good example I have. This, is, this says, simplify the expression and it's really just a big square root a big uh, rational expression so i'm just trying to see what perfect squares can i factor out here what can i sort of separate that i can square root um, and we could do that with the factor tree for for 12 i could make a factor tree for that find all the prime uh, factors or it might be easier just to see what perfect squares I can divide out of the 12. So that's what I'm going to do. So instead of 12, I noticed that I could write this as 4 times 3. And 4 is a perfect square, so I'll be able to square root that later. And x squared is also a perfect square. I'm just going to bring that down. Um, y to the 6, that's also a perfect square, even though it's a 6 power. So I'm going to bring that down as well. So let's go ahead and square root this 4. The square root of 4 is 2, so I can pull that out of the square root. The 3 does have to stay in there because I can't square root 3. It's going to give me a weird decimal and irrational number. Um, the x squared, I can, I can square root that. That's just going to give me x. And the y to the 6th power, I could also square root that. Uh, that's going to give me y to the 3rd. All right, so this is basically my answer. I just want to clean this up a little bit. 
Um, so like three times two is gonna be six. And let's just move these over so they're all together. The X would be here. The Y to the third should be over here as well. And then the only thing that I couldn't square root was the three. So I would just bring that down. And really that's all I could do. There's nothing else that I could square root or simplify. So I always like simplify problems because they take something that's kind of messy uh, or weird looking and you just uh, kind of get it down to its most basic parts and just as simple as possible. Here's another good one, simplify this expression and it looks, it looks pretty scary. We have kind of three rational terms here, three square root terms. And all I can really do, I can't really do too much with this, ra this radical six because there's no other radical sixes, but these I can combine. It's sort of like combined like terms. These are both radical fives. So I could do six radical five minus two radical five is four radical five. So even though I'm kind of subtracting the square roots, it's sort of the same thing as combined like terms. This radical six, there's nothing else to combine that with, so I'm just gonna bring that down. And again, that's really all I could do. This would be my answer. There's not too much else I could simplify here. Um, I could do the factor tree on six, maybe, but it's really just gonna break into a two and a three, and there's nothing to square root there. So that's gonna be it. This would be my answer. All right, here's a hard one. This says, simplify the expression again. And what I notice right away is I have two trinomials that are being divided. Um, so I noticed that I could factor these trinomials. Um, I also noticed that when I'm, I have a big division problem, I'm always looking for things that I can cancel. Anything that I see on the top that's also on the bottom, um, I could cancel. So first of all, let's go ahead and factor this. I can't, I can't cancel things like this. This would be nice to cancel that, but I can't. These are being subtracted, not multiplied and it just doesn't work that way. So let's go ahead and first, um, let's factor the top first. So I'm gonna use the bottoms up method for that. I'll just multiply the outside numbers, three times negative 15 is negative 45. And I'm just gonna look for factors of negative 45 that add up to this middle number, I'm trying to get negative four, right? So we could do, of course we could do uh, negative three, times a positive 15. So kind of switching the signs here, we can multiply that. I could also do negative nine times five. Uh, that would give me negative 45. And it looks like that's the one that I wanna use, right? If I add these together, minus nine plus five, I would get that minus four. So let's go ahead and use these as our factors. This will be x minus nine times x plus five. And then our last step, we just need to divide this first number out that we multiplied in at the beginning. So this will be divide by three, divide by three. On the first factor, this is good. I can divide these. Nine divided by three is just three. So my first factor would be x minus three. Um, but on the second factor, I can't really divide uh, five thirds. It's gonna give me a decimal. So instead I just move that three to the front of the factor. I can do that with factors and then that way I don't end up with a decimal or a fraction. Even though technically these are equivalent, these are the same factor, we just, we don't really wanna write it that way. It makes things more complicated. All right, so I factored the top of the problem now. This is x minus three times three x plus five. And the bottom one, I think we can factor this uh, pretty easily. I, I think I can do this in my head. Uh, there's no leading coefficient. So I'm really just looking for factors of three. There's only two that add up to negative four. Uh, so I'm gonna use negative one, negative three. So x minus one, x minus three. That one's pretty straightforward. You can factor that one in your head. And so now that everything is nice and factored, I can see pretty easily uh, there's an x minus three on top, there's one on bottom. These are gonna cancel. And that just leaves us with our final answer is three x plus five over x minus one. All right, here's another good one. This is a good word problem. So of course they love to always 
give us word problems on these tests to, just to make sure that we can understand what we're doing, read a problem, and describe what kind of math we're using. So here, Best Buy is selling this TV for $1,250. Our sales tax is 6%. And they want us to write an algebraic equation that's going to describe this transaction using P as the amount that we have to pay. So that means already I know that the equation is going to be P equals uh, whatever. Um, the amount the TV cost is $1,250. So it's basically just going to be this $1,250 plus tax. And to calculate tax, uh, simple tax is just multiply. So let's do that. Uh, I'm just going to multiply the, the price of the TV, 1250 times the tax here is 6%. And just notice uh, when you write percents as decimals, it just means move the decimal over two places. So 6% is 0 0.06 as a decimal. All right, and that's really it. They're not asking you to solve this um, to calculate how much you, how much would be on your receipt. You would just multiply that and then add the twelve fifty. But that's pretty much it. They're just saying write the algebraic equation so you can stop here. So that's that's pretty much it. I just wanted to show you guys kind of five example problems. These are what they like to ask on the PERT: uh, factoring, exponents, solve the equations. PEMDAS, order of operations, these are all very foundational basics of math. So I want to do more of these. If you guys like this video, just let me know. Uh, leave me a comment or something, and I'll make, I'll make another PERT review video if this helps you guys.